All right, so let's take a look at another linked list problem. This one is just called reverse linked list. It's very common in problems that you might have to reverse a linked list, iterate through linked lists. So in this particular case, let's talk about how you would reverse one. So you're given the head of a singly linked list. You need to reverse the list and return the reversed list. So to return the list, typically you're going to return whatever the head is. And so if we're reversing it, you'd most likely be returning the five node after it's reversed. As you can see in this image, one, two, three, four, five, reversed, five, four, three, two, one. So how would you go about reversing it? Uh, you're probably going to want to, uh, you know, change what the one points to. So the one is going to end up pointing to nothing. And then you're also going to then make the two point to it. So how would you do that? You would have to probably consider maybe multiple pointers, maybe you know what the next one is, and as well as you have some sort of previous list node that you're going to be using to set the value that you have. So what I mean by that is, let's say we started off with a list node previous, set it to null, so that way when we're first iterating through our list, one can be set to point to that null value, and then when you get to one, you could set one as the previous value, so when now you're at two, you can make two point to one, and so forth. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So as I said, you're going to want to have a previous node, and that will get updated, so that way you can point each node to the previous one as you're reversing it. And you also now need to iterate through the list. So we're starting at the head, and we'll say while it's not equal to null, we're going to essentially uh, keep iterating the head until the end of the list. So now, here's the important part. Uh, we're going to want to point that head node, or whatever the head is, as we're going to be changing it as we move through the list, we're going to want to point its next value to uh, the previous one. So let's go ahead and do that now, and I'll also talk about something you need to do before that. So head.next equals prev, and then you could also make prev equal head, so that way when you move on to the next one, uh, you can end up setting that next value, it's next to the previous instance. And we'll actually also just say head equals head.next. Now that part that I said was important. You need to also have some way for this to actually work. So what I mean by that is I went ahead with the naive walking through the solution, not thinking about it to kind of showcase this issue. When you change head.next equal to previous, you actually don't know what head.next is. You lose that. So this will essentially end up looping on itself because you've changed the head.next and then you set it to brief and then it just ends up becoming brief and it's going to obviously not work as intended. So instead, what you need to do is also create some sort of temp value, or actually let's just call it next, because it really is the next value in, in the list, and we'll say that it equals head.next. So now instead, when you want to bump the head value, you say head equals next. This is so that way you, again, have some temporary storage of the next value so when you reassign it, you don't lose what it is. And now after that is all said and done, you've now gotten to the end of the list, you now need to return the new head, and the new head will actually just be that previous node. Reason being, let's go ahead and walk through this here. As you keep iterating through the list, you're constantly saying, as you come here to one, this becomes the previous node, then you iterate to two, and it's the previous all the way to the end, where five, and once you got to five, it is considered the last previous node that you're working with. So that is actually the head, that's what we want. So coming back down here again, let's just go ahead and submit this. And as you can see, it was accepted. Basically, it's just going to be big O of N, which is just the, the length of the list, being that you're just iterating from beginning to the end list and you have constant space because you're not allocating uh, you know, any extra space other than this previous node and this next node, but that's not considered, uh, you know, big O of N or anything like that because you're not storing a copy of the list or anything to that extent. 
So it's just constant space to store those two values. And that's it. If you have any questions about this problem or you wanna see another problem specifically in the future, let me know in the comments below and please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content. Thank you.